broccolis with hats. Part 1. Stain's attempt at life was rather subpar when you think about it. By Cheerios. Read by My Lost and Found. Summary. No, I do not kill people. That is, that is my least favorite thing to do. Midoriya grinned a tad too wide, nudging the very clearly dead body of the vigilante stain with the tip of his red sneaker. Internships have started abruptly after the week-long break from intense physical activity after the sports festival. For Ida, they began a little too quickly. His brother was still cooped up in the hospital in Mustafa with his deadly injuries and visiting him was a priority he was hesitant to set aside. Many revelations had come about during that time. Primarily, Ida had discovered during a hospital visit that the Todoroki's mother happened to also be there. Though, in the psych ward, Ida had felt he wasn't close enough to his classmate to ask why. Perhaps Midori was, though. Midori was well-liked by the entire class, enough to get away with asking just about anything and still receive an honest answer. Ida sometimes envied that. And that Midoriya lived close by, when they happened to all run into each other. Maybe I could meet your mother, Todoroki-kun, Midoriya suggested with his usual smile. Todoroki's lightly fleshed ears implied to Ida that yes, it was definitely okay. He mentioned once, Ida thought, that he and Bakugo lived close to each other. The possibility of running into Bakugo of all people while he was in the simmering mood he'd found himself in was daunting enough that he abandoned that conversation quickly enough. Midoriya had mentioned, however, in a conversation about internships that he'd seen Manuel on the list, and how he was primarily stationed in Hosu, and that the heroes in that area had taken extra precautions to avoid. Well... Ida had caught that much. Midoriya was his friend, but Ida could admit to not having the attention span necessary to catalog everything he said. Todoroki, on the other hand, seemed particularly interested in hanging off Midoriya's every word, primarily when he mentioned his chosen mentor, a hero by the name of Gran Torino, had briefly discussed patrolling a prefecture near Hosu over email, to which Todoroki had chimed in, that his father had mentioned passing through. When Midoriya had brought up that Todoroki had said explicitly that he wasn't interested in being around Endeavor, Todoroki had been suspiciously quick to assure their mutual friend that he'd given it more than enough thought. Regardless, Ida had tuned out the conversation. Manuel had been on his list of potential internships. Not necessarily the most glamorous option, nor even the best matchup in general, but... Hosu. Hosu was exactly where he needed to be next week. He thanked them, cutting off the conversation and hurrying towards the school to adjust his internship plans. Black shadows. Red cloth. A glint of metal. Ida ran the second manual turned his back. Would he apologize vehemently later? Of course, This was about the man that had nearly murdered his older brother, and had all but ended his career. How could he let something like ditching his mentor weigh him down? No. Ida had made his decision. He would, without a doubt, be the one to take down Stain and rid him from the world. Anger burned in his eyes as he ran through the chaos-filled streets of Hosu with the determination of a vengeful brother. In his haste to stop and restart his quirk around corners, and accidentally missing a few turns, his quirk wasn't good with direction changes. He didn't notice the striking green hair of his classmate, nor the red and white split off in the distance, followed by a characteristically enraged pro-hero. If he had, perhaps he wouldn't have been quite so surprised with what had happened next. After nearly ten minutes of searching around the back alleys of Hosu, Ida finally came to an intersection. As he was about to speed past, he heard the faintest sound of metallic scraping against concrete. Ida's eyes went red with rage. 
With a burst of speed, he nearly twisted his ankle in his haste to turn directly towards the alley in question. The shadows cast lengthy darkness out into the bulk of the street, as if the aura of the space was enough to devour all light present. Ida's speed slowed down with a sudden hesitance. What great evil was he about to face? He gulped, realizing that this might have been what his brother had felt moments before. Before he... Before Stain. His rage built again. He furled his brow and walked closer, quirk at the ready, but not actively running. He couldn't be too careful. The sound of his engines weren't loud, but they weren't quiet either. Ida couldn't afford anything to take away from his task. Carefully, quietly, he approached the darkness and... What the... He... Midoriya. Ida jumped at the sound of Todoroki's voice, suddenly very close. I got your message. What's... They paused. Midoriya? Is... Is that a body? Todoroki asked, sounding numb. Ida, well, yeah, he felt that. Midoriya jumped like Ida had, not a moment before. Oh, uh, oh, hey, how, how'd he get here? Ida, slowly, distantly, like in a dream, reached up to pinch his own arm. Surely this wasn't real. Surely Midoriya wasn't holding a knife. Surely Midoriya had nothing to do with this. But it was real. And that was definitely Stain's signature scarf and collection of knives. Is... is that Stain? Because Ida had to know that they were seeing the same body he was. Um, I... Stain? Midoriya chuckled nervously. <laughs> Who's... uh... Yeah. Todoroki, braver than Ida in that moment, walked towards the body. Did you... Like, kill him? No, I do not kill people. That is, that is my least favorite thing to do. Midoriya grinned a tad too wide, nudging the very clearly dead body of the vigilante stain with the tip of his red sneaker. Ida, gaping like a fish, finally caught air in his throat. What happened here, Midoriya? Midoriya sighed, sounding not nearly as upset as he should after committing murder? Did he even? Well, I was with my mentor. Yes? Um, evacuating civilians. Okay. And, uh, I saw you, Ida. Midoriya pressed the tips of his fingers together, a habit he'd gotten from Uraraka. And then? Well, I saw Stain. Go on. So I sent Todoroki Kun my location to help beat him, but then, um. What? I remembered the thing about your brother. Ida flinched at the reminder. So I, um, I went up to him. Midoriya continued, sounding quieter by the second. What happened next? I, well, I grabbed one of his knives, Midoriya said, sounding more like a question. And I kind of stabbed him 37 times in the chest. Ida's mouth parted slightly, glancing around the alley as if, though the, as if questioning his place in the world. Todoroki had no such problems voicing his concerns. Midoriya, that kills people. Ida glanced at his classmate because, well, no shit. Midoriya smiled shakily. Oh, uh, well, I uh, didn't know that. How could you not know that? Ida could feel years being shaved off his lifespan. His friend nudged the body again, looking so defeated, and Ida should not feel bad for yelling at his friend for committing murder. But he does. 
What does that say about him? Yeah, I'm in the wrong here, he said, sounding like a kicked puppy. Todoroki shook his head. You're not in the wrong, Midoriya. Ida's face scrunched, disagreement etched into the planes of his face. Todoroki, Midoriya just murdered a person. Todoroki's scathing look quieted him. Well, um, this is kind of awkward to ask. Midoriya shakily smiled. But I don't want to go to jail. Could you? Well, revenge was achieved. So just this once, Ida would pitch in. Grab a trash bag, latex gloves, and a shovel. The bright expression on his friends' faces, well, as bright as Todoroki's expression ever got, made the next hour they spent hiding a body worth it.